Hello and welcome to Tech Deals bonus video time, World of Warships. We're playing World of Warships today on the Intel i5 second generation Sandy Bridge processor, the i5-2400. We have an EVGA GeForce GTX 1060 3 gigabyte super clocked graphics card installed. 1080p resolution, high detail. I'm recording this using my external hardware capture card, no shadow play, no performance degradation, real-time performance numbers in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, courtesy of MSI Afterburner, and there will be fraps numbers later at the end of this video. The reason I'm doing this video is I noticed something when I was testing the various computers. Coming up very soon, I am going to have a four-way competition between the AMD FX 8300, the Pentium G4560, that's the new one with hyper-threading, this older i5-2400, and then a brand new i5-7400 KB Lake. The question that's gonna be asked is, what do you really get for your money? These are four different price point computers, different availabilities, two are custom built, two are pre-built with graphics card added. However, this game right now is being played on the i5-2400, and besides it being a really good game, um, it's worth actually watching the gameplay. I'm quite proud of this one, actually. But beyond that point, it shows that different games require different things. And I want to talk about that. So it gave me a good chance to do it. So I interrupted my benchmarking and said, I'm doing a quick bonus video. If you're new to watching my game performance videos, they usually go a little bit different. I usually have several different either games or different computers to compare. This is just going to be this one replay, and I'm going to try to make this fairly short, and then we're going to have some fun and watch the gameplay. Let me give you the results up front in case you don't want to watch the entire thing. Short version. This is a CPU dependent game, not a graphics card dependent game. I want you to look at the i5-2400 third line in the MSI Afterburner. We are currently using 75%, up to 75% of our CPU. Essentially what this means is that we're using three of our four processing cores. This game absolutely will use more than just two cores. Again, remember, I'm not recording on this machine. I am nice Citadel hit, boom, there's going to be several of those in this match. Uh, spoiler alert, but yes, I did quite well. Um, we are using, there's 80%. This is a CPU heavy game. Will it run on a two core? Yes, it runs better on a four core. Look at our graphics card. Top line, very first percentage, 22%, 37, 38, 27. We're hardly using any of our graphics card. This game does need some graphics card. Integrated graphics, sweet. Two Citadels. Destroyed, devastating strike. I obliterated that cruiser. That guy's probably cursing me. Ye pirate scum smashed me, and I didn't even see them hit because he had become invisible. But hey, what can I say? Even I get lucky once in a while. Back to the performance. So graphics card wise, if we had a RX 460 or a GTX 1050 in here, we would be doing just fine. Both cards would have enough performance to drive this at high detail at 1080p. Now we'd be using all the graphics card, but you don't have to get a GTX 1060 if you want to play World of Warships. Please note, integrated graphics would not do this. Integrated graphics on the new KB Lake chips would not do this. You really need a graphics card, but you don't need a 1060, which is in this case a 200R graphics card. Now I want to draw your attention to the real-time frame rate, the last line on MSI Afterburner. We're currently getting 45, 46, 47 frames per second. It is not holding at 60 frames per second, and this is not the fault of our graphics card. This is a very common misconception I see all the time. People will ask either in comments or forums, will this graphics card bottleneck my CPU or will this CPU bottleneck my graphics card? It depends. Are you playing Battlefield 1? or World of Warships? Are you playing Grand Theft Auto V or League of Legends? What is the limitation to performance? In this game, nice. Did you just see those two Citadels? I wrecked that Yamato. Unfortunately, I don't think I get the kill. Somebody else did. He's got what, less than, yeah, I didn't get the kill. All right, I got a couple secondary hits though, which I don't think did much, but eh, that's neither here nor there. I've taken about, oh, 40% damage, but I'll start repairing that here shortly. 
Anyway, back to the performance, the reason why I'm doing this. So we're not maintaining 60 frames per second because this is a CPU bound game. As I said before, another Citadel, that makes six. I don't get that many Citadels very often, which is why when I got this gameplay, I'm like, all right, bonus video time. This is too cool. I don't remember if I sync him or not, but needless to say, I, I, I was very, I'm not, I'm a very average, no Citadels there, but that was pretty good. I'm an average World of Warships player. I enjoy the game. I have fun with the game. I play it a lot because I love warships. I love uh, naval warfare in general. Well, I wouldn't want to be there, but I love the subject. Anyway, back to the performance. We'll get to Lux playing. Ah, one more hit. That was an overpenetration. I need to do a whole review of this game. If you've never played World of Warships, completely free to play. Download at worldofwarships.com. It, it's there are dozens of ships that you can play absolutely for free. You don't ever have to spend a dime. The only thing you really spend money on is progression, advancing faster with experience points and credits. But you can earn basically everything in the game that's important and have way too much fun doing it. Unlimited play time, no limited matches or anything else. You can go all the way to tier 10, go, go to the very end game. All the best ships at the very end of the game are all earned using gameplay, not real money. Uh, the best ships that you can buy with real money are tier 8s, whereas you can get tier 10s by earning them in the game. So, very cool. Okay, back to performance. When you ask the question... Will this game or that game or this graphics card or that CPU bottleneck X? It's never that simple of a question because the answer changes depending upon what we're looking at. This game is a perfect example of where more CPU power is what's required. We are not going to average 60 frames a second. Our minimum is well below 60 frames per second. And we're playing at 1080p, not even at the highest detail, in a fairly basic free-to-play warship game where we're looking at ocean most look at this there's nothing on the screen except some water and a ship and yet we're stuck at under 60 frames a second why cpu this is a game we're upgrading from an i5 2400 to an i5 7400 would make a noticeable difference to frame rate you would be above 60 frames per second playing on the 7400 we're not here because this is a six-year-old CPU. It does, however, play fine, and the i5-2400s are, in fact, incredible value for the money. I have done numerous videos on them. You can pick them up for under $150 on eBay for the complete computer. Spend a little bit of money to drop a graphics card in, and away you go. The one thing that I highly recommend you do if you buy an older machine is to upgrade the RAM. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM in here. We're using 10 of it for World of Warships at 1080p with nothing else running. Okay, Fraps and MSI Afterburner are running, but they use very, very little RAM. They are not the reason we're using a lot of RAM. And again, remember, I'm not recording on this machine. I have an HD, the HDMI out cable from the graphics card is going to a completely separate computer to my Elgato HD60 Pro hardware capture card. It recorded this gameplay and then the output from that went to the monitor. So the computer doesn't even know it's being recorded. We're using 10 gigs of RAM to play World of Warships at 1080p. Now would it play in 8 gigs of RAM? Yes it would. Would it be as smooth? Yeah, mostly. Yes, a lot of the time, except when it isn't. The average frame rate would be very similar. The single biggest reason to upgrade your RAM is to improve the smoothness of gameplay. It means that Windows can keep everything in disk cache, in memory. Nice, another... Look at that, I did 158,000 damage and I've only sunk two ships so far, but six Citadels, I have wrecked these ships. Very proud of myself. Um, spoiler alert, I will not end up top of my team. Several of my teammates did a very good job as well, so nope, didn't get top of the team, but it was a lot of fun. What can I say? That poor North Carolina just doesn't know what's about to hit them. And incoming armor-piercing shells. You can tell the type of shells. There's armor-piercing, you know, two penetrations, did some damage. White shells are armor-piercing. The orange shells are high explosive. They each have pros and cons, which I won't talk about here, but that's what they are. That's the last big set of hit points for me to hit, because at this point, once he's sunk, there's only three destroyers left. Uh, torpedoes got him. 
You can see my secondaries auto firing off the left hand side of the ship. They're firing at a destroyer. A couple of hits over there. And get the ship turned around because there will be torpedoes incoming. If that destroyer is not completely incompetent, there's going to be torpedoes on the way. Look at that fire. Now, the white shells were my main guns, except the little teeny white shells are secondaries. And then the other, or those sh that's all secondaries. These are auto-firing smaller guns, the 5-inch and 8-inch guns that are on the side of battleships that will just rant, that will shoot at anything that comes within their range. As you can see, there's the torpedoes. I said we had torpedoes coming, did I not? Yep. Battleship drivers, biggest thing to learn in World of Warships. You have an A key and a D key. Now, I know this is hard to remember, but it's very important because battleships don't do this. The A key turns to ship left, and the D key turns to ship right. There, you just found out more than 50% of World of Warships battleship drivers know. I kid you not, there's a joke in the game. I, I'm stealing this from uh, The Mighty Jingles. And if you like this game and don't watch The Mighty Jingles, why? He's hilarious. But if you know who I'm talking about, The Mighty Jingles is a guy who has a YouTube channel and does World of Tanks and World of Warships replays. I watch him. I think he's hilarious. He's deaf. All you have to do is type in The Mighty Jingles in YouTube. You'll find his videos all over. He's been doing it for years. He's got, I don't know, half a million subscribers. Anyway, so go watch his videos if you find it interesting. You'll learn a lot. So he makes a joke that says, uh-oh, does this battleship driver know his WASD hacks? And the joke being is that battleship drivers just sail in a straight line, and he loves playing his destroyers because destroyers like to lob uh, torpedoes from distance at big, fat, dumb battleships that want to sail in a straight line. And he always has a joke where he goes, ooh, battleship sailing in a straight line, lunch, nom, 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 because it's, you know, credits and experience and lots of damage and, you know, the battleships just sail right into them. Whoa, how did that happen? That destroyer must be cheating. No, you didn't turn your ship. Turn your ship, you'll avoid most of them. Oh, that guy's about to die. Now, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see that our fraps counter came back. I, and we won. I had pressed F11 to turn the fraps recording off because when it transitions to this result screen, uh, the frame rate dips down and I didn't want that to affect the result. 518,000 credits. Now, if you start playing World of Warships, you're not going to earn credits like that down at the lower tiers. But the ships cost a lot less. The ships up here cost millions and millions of credits. The ships down at the lower levels cost thousands of credits. So it balances itself out. You can see the results here. For me, this is a fairly good game. Now, I know that there are some masters out there who would just put me right in my place. I got third place on the team. We had two people get higher than, uh, than, than I did, but I did fairly well, and for me, I'm happy with this result. In terms of overall performance, average frame rate, 54 frames per second, minimum of 38, and a max of 73. Long story short, completely, totally playable, but not wonderful. Faster CPU, newer CPU would perform much, much better. I hope you've enjoyed this extra bonus video. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big button directly below this video. Post your comments in the comment section below. And as always, check out the links in the video description below. I will put links to my i5-2400 deal video. I'll put a link to eBay for the i5-2400 deal itself. I'll put a link to the video card I used. I'll put a link to World of Warships where you can go download this game for free and play it and have way too much fun. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.